Hey, I'm Justin from VinCraft, and these are coin mix, and I'm about to show you how they work. So I was taking apart a machine to salvage, and I started thinking about it. I was like, hey, I don't know really how a coin mix actually works. I've never taken it apart to see how it operates and how it works. And what I got to see through both of these is how simple it is, but how beautiful they work. What I have here on the left, your right there on the screen, is a beaver mechanism from Canada. This actually didn't come from a full beaver machine. It actually used just the mechanism and a few other little parts in order to work as a gumball machine. What I have here on my right, which is your left, is a coin mechanism from an oak machine. And these are kind of more common. And more than likely what most of the clones are going to look like as well, uh, as far as their operation goes. Unfortunately, I don't have a Chinese made plastic version. I would have to imagine it's made more like an oak because this is actually one of the two simpler but more parts involved machines that there are as far as between the two of these anyway. So let's go over the basic operation and what this does if you're not familiar with a coin mechanism. How you can't be I don't know but I'm just under that assumption. So the basic idea is somebody like a kid or a person goes over to the machine and they drop a quarter in and when they twist the quarter drops down into the machine into its coin box. What you don't see in the background is that when the quarter goes in, it goes into its little slot. And as it rotates, it's just traveling around in a circle until it reaches this little end plate. And this kicks the quarter out and down into your coin box. The beaver is exactly the same, just a little more compact. Beaver is, well, it's rather interesting how it accomplishes its mechanisms versus how the oak does it. And the oak is probably a little bit easier to replicate, at least in a casting sense, especially something in plastic. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now that I got you guys closer to these machines, let me take them apart and show you what I'm talking about as far as their internal mechanisms. I'm going to start with this oak first, mostly because it is a very simple machine. It's only held in by Phillips head screws, first of all. That should give you some indication how simple this thing is. So let me show you something that might be of interest before I completely take this oak machine apart. Now, when you put the quarter in and you turn the mechanism, obviously it spits the quarter out. But when you don't have the quarter in, it doesn't turn. Why is that? Why does that happen? Well, let's take apart the one thing that most people assume it is, and it's this little control here. And Spoiler warning, it's not, and I'll demonstrate. So this little tab here is just held in by a Phillips head screw, and that's all it is. It actually rides on this, I believe this is brass, but I'm not entirely sure. But that little, this little flat piece of metal is a spring that holds this down and onto the mech. Now, I've got that out, but watch what happens when I turn the mechanism now. Why does the mechanism still not turn? Why does it why does it stay locked like that? And why does it only turn, even with this little, even with this little tab out, why does it still not turn, but it will turn completely with a quarter in it? This is more of a theft prevention. Essentially, in most cases, again, most cases, it prevents washers from being used that are the size of quarters, because they do exist. Now, I'll admit that doesn't stop all of them, but it is supposed to stop it because this rides directly in the center of the little alleyway here. And let me show you again. You'll notice it's sitting right about here, this little foot here. And it's right about where the center of the quarter would be. If this were a washer, this would drop down and actually prevent the mechanism from moving. But because this is a quarter, it's going to allow it to continue just like that. But again, no quarter, it doesn't turn. Why is that? What's stopping it now? Well, we have to dive deeper into this machine to show you. So the first thing I need to take off is the center gear here. That just usually just simply pops off. The next piece is this, and this is just a little rider for this part and this little piece here. And when it gets put together, it is kind of tight, so you have to pry some leverage on there. I know I use a screwdriver. You're not supposed to use a screwdriver. 
use a proper prying tool. But that comes off next, and now I can take these bolts out. And again, there should be a fourth one here. Uh, that's been lost to who knows where. That's the thing you get with used machines sometimes. So I take those screws out, and again, if I had that fourth one, that would be gone too. And now I just simply lift up. And you begin to see some of the magic here. Now, the part that is preventing the mechanism from turning is this little arm here. And it's held in by just a simple fulcrum and another pair of leaf springs. Now I'm going to hold this so it doesn't try and pop out on me. So as you can see, as I start to turn this, it stops. Why is this stopping it? Well, once you put the quarter in, which is going to be kind of hard because, again, I've got this thing apart. So once you start turning it with the quarter in it, it pushes that lever arm up and the mechanism is allowed to continue to turn. So again, with the quarter out, it just stops on that ridge. So once the quarter gets past this point, what prevents it from going backwards? Because now there's nothing really stopping it from going backwards here. Well, that part is taken care of by the little ratcheting mechanism right here. So once you get past that point, it locks in to prevent the mechanism from turning backwards. And each time you turn it, it hits another ratcheting point. So as you're turning a mechanism, you hear that click, 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 that's this. This is the ratcheting mechanism that prevents it from turning backwards. Now, once you get past that last point, this is where it dumps a quarter. And this little ridge here acts as a bit of a kicker. So that way it kind of forces it down and into your coin box. Pretty interesting how much is actually built into this. And like I said, I think the cheaper Chinese machines are built more like this oak machine here. Now let me show you the difference between this and a beaver. If you happen to take apart one of your acorn coin mechanisms and you kind of forget how which way this goes on, it's pretty simple. This little tip here faces up. Otherwise, it doesn't go on far enough. So just remember this little tip here goes up, just like that. Then you put your little piece here back on. And then this, the gear, actually just sits in a little square drive. There's a mark on the top of the gear on the Acorn machine that indicates where it goes straight up. Again, that's how you time your machine overall for so it can drop product. And yes, I'll admit this whole process can be a little bit time consuming. There we go. See, really easy. There's only these few screws, a screw to take off the center gear, and also this for the theft prevention and coin validation. That's probably the proper term. That's a coin validation arm. Again, because it can be fooled by a washer if you don't have this in here. And I don't know if I said it, but this is just a little piece of spring metal. There's nothing really special about this. It's a flat piece of metal that just has the ability to spring back as it moves. The spring, the way it goes back in is that it, it must put tension back on this arm. So it curves down and onto the arm. If you get confused by that, just remember the spring metal itself is, is bent and the direction it's bent in is where it puts tension. So that's where it needs to go. It needs to go with, it, with its pointed down. So let's go into this beaver mechanism and immediately when I turn this around, or if you didn't notice it the first time, it's a very different mechanism. Even though it's, again, doing the same thing. And this, the first thing that strikes you is just the type of screws it has. It has a square drive screw. And that is what this little piece is here. This is a square drive driver. And it was part of a security bit set that I got from Harbor Freight. If you don't have a square drive, just go somewhere like Harbor Freight and get a security bit set. Mine was a 100 piece set and it came with square drives, but it comes with all kinds of other security bits that can help you in some of these machines that have these unique fasteners here. The next thing that kind of pops out is how the ratcheting mechanism works on this beaver machine. Instead of being down in the machine like the acorns is here, where it's actually below this little pop metal piece, it's right here, right in front. And the way this takes apart is very similar though. First you start with the gear. Similar to the acorn, it is a bit of a square drive, 
But again, here's the other difference. It has a washer under its gear and so that weird little leaf, leaf metal that was just sitting out here. Now that we have that apart, you can actually pull the handle out. It comes out just like that, it's pretty simple. And if you happen to get a beaver machine where this symbol is upside down, you can pop this out and you can see there's two screws here. This allows you to flip it around. So if your beaver machine's handle looks like that, just pop these two screws off, flip it around, and put it back together. You see it has a coin validator, it's sitting right here. Again, it has a little leaf spring with the little validator sitting there. So I'm gonna take that apart. And the coin validator is also somewhat different as well. As you can see, it's bent very differently, and it also is held on by a little peg but it does still do the same thing. It is there to ride in the center of the quarter to validate that it is a full quarter and not a washer. And another neat thing for these beaver machines is that you see it says made in Canada. So this is made up in the great north. The next part to come off is this backing plate, which this whole gear will come with. The fasteners for the backing plate are smaller than the fastener for the gear. So don't get these two mixed up. Otherwise the gear won't hold and the backing plate won't go together right. Now that all the fasteners have been removed, it just simply pops out. And this is where the quarter mechanism is. And this is where things get a little different. As you can see, as you turn the quarter mechanism, which I'm gonna actually grab the handle again because it's just, it's just easier to turn. But as you can see, it also has a stop. The lever is right here. So you put your quarter in, and it rides around, and as you see, it goes right past it, and you've done your first validation, and then the second one, of course, is the, that little leaf ring right here. It goes around, then gets kicked out, and into your coin box. Now, let's take this handle out, pop out the quarter mechanism. As you can see, it's just one big, solid hunk of cast metal. And here is that stopper. So what the quarter does, it hops, it goes on here, it pushes on this lever, which enacts this to go past and prevents it from locking on these lugs on the back. So again, quarter rides up here, pushes that lever that's right here. I'm, I'm activating it from right here, but it's doing the same thing. Once it gets past that point, it goes past these two lugs and your quarter eventually drops in. So now that we've looked at the coin mechanism, let's look at this handle for the beaver machine, because again, this is something that's very interesting. If you need to flip it over, the best thing to do is just take apart these two little screws. With those screws removed, it just slips out. Now, interestingly, there is a drive here. As you can see, it has two little grooves that these little roll pins sit in. And behind those roll pins are a pair of plastic rods that apparently act as a bit of tension force. I'm just gonna put this back together. Another little trick, if you happen to take this apart and you don't remember which way this goes up, the screws usually are able to tell you, but just in case, remember the quarter gets kicked out, so this opening goes right here. And just like with a lot of things on these machines, you don't need to reef down on this stuff. You just need to have enough tension on your fastener to hold it together. Because again, this is all pop metal. Even this beaver machine is just pop metal. So you need to tighten it up, and once it stops, just stop. You don't need to go any further. And I don't think it matters which way this washer goes on, but for reference, if you happen to see that big line right here, that's the way it goes. The big line follows with the gear here. And yes, you want to line up the arrow with the little V-notch here, because this and this can go the wrong way and be out of phase. So as you can see, it doesn't line up right, but once you put it with the arrow, it's ready to make contact with the gear inside of your machine. Again, if you take this gear off for any reason, doesn't matter what, line up this little arrow with this cast V so that everything gets in timed correctly. If you don't, again, the gear won't work with the gear that drives your machine. But that's pretty much it. That's the beaver machine. Again, you can see why I believe this is the more complicated between it and the acorn. 
and why I think most Chinese machines are going to be more like this than the Beaver because again the stuff that's inside of here is much easier to make out of plastic as compared to the mechanisms that are inside of a Beaver machine. One other thing to point out between the Acorn and the Beaver is despite the fact that this is a much larger coin mechanism the beaver machine is much heavier there's a lot more parts and not only just more parts but actually thicker material used throughout that machine so it's kind of interesting to see that despite this being the smaller piece it's the heavier between the two well guys that's it for this episode hope you learned something and always don't be afraid to give me some sort of suggestions like if you want to see something from a particular machine i'll try and find it and we'll go into the tactical details of it in the meantime like share subscribe hit the bell i know i'm not doing these videos as often as i need to and i apologize for that but it is the whole i need to make a living thing I and mean, right now this channel just doesn't do it but with your support with that like that share that subscriptions those ringing the bells that's how youtube knows that this channel needs to grow and that's how it can actually help me make more money in the long term so again, that's it. I thank you again for watching this video, and I hope you learned something. I'm Justin from VinCraft, and I'll see you in the next one. So if you want more from VinCraft, hit subscribe. Otherwise, check out these other videos.